What's up guys? As always, I hope everyone is having a great day, but let's not waste any time and hop right into it. So in today's video, we will be going over frontline cards, uh, better known as tanks, within the fire splinter. All of the cards mentioned in the video today will be playable in the upcoming modern format. Let's start off with some of the common tanks, which will be more affordable for most all players. I will also try to provide clips of most of these cards in battle to give you an example. And I'll do that using the Peak Monsters Battle Chain, which is a really useful tool to learn different cards and how to position them and use them in battle. The first card we're going to be talking about is one of the newer reward cards, the Venari Heatsmith. I kind of feel like this card can be valuable in certain rule sets such as Little League and no melee such as uh, Keep Your Distance, the Keep Your Distance rule set. With that said, he is pretty situational and can fall off in the majority of battles due to his low health and shield. And I do have a clip of him in battle. I'm going to show that to you guys right now. This is one of the battles I found on the battle chain with the Venari Heatsmith. These guys are all golded out. So let's check it out. Uh, it is the Keep Your Distance rule set and target practice. Let's check it out and see how this goes. If there were magic monsters here, he would be able to absorb... A few more hits than normal, or than a normal lower card, lower health cards, due to his void armor. Although not much, if any, magic would carry against this man. But this is just a little short clip to show how the Venari Heatsmith can be used. Next up is the Antoid Platoon. This guy would also be good in the Little League rule set. Low mana cost battles and against melee ducks due to his shield ability and low mana cost. In the later leagues, he'll gain scavenge as well, which means he'll gain health once other cards die on the battlefield, which can make this a pretty powerful card. And I think this card is a little more usable overall than the Venari Heatsmith. Here we have a great clip of the Antoid Platoon in battle and it's up against a magic deck which can be troublesome for the Antoid Platoon but this guy has set up a pretty good deck with the Scavo Hireling and Opportunity and Sneak. These guys are going to provide a lot of damage to the backline and get rid of this magic damage before they can take out the Antoid Platoon. We'll go ahead and play that clip now. So that first card is just going to absorb the hit. Opportunity and Sneak are going to break up that damage in the back. He was only able to get off one magic hit, so Antoid Platoon was able to survive. And due to the shield and repair, they were able to hold off that Unicorn Mustang. Next up is the Sherlock Minotaur. Although we couldn't find any current battle clips of this card, I feel like he could be situationally used in the modern format due to his true strike ability, as there are a ton of high speed and flying monsters in Chaos Legion. In the later leagues, he will also gain Retaliate, which will give him the chance to attack his attackers. But I do feel like this card can fall off in battle due to not have, having any shield and his very low speed. Now I will be going over the Living Lava card. This card is probably one of the most used and in the Fire Splinter and has great damage. Shield and armor making it a great choice against melee lineups. It can, however, fall off when up against speed or magic lineups due to its low health pool and slow speed. 
And as you can see in the later leagues, it's going to gain rust, which is great. Because that's going to reduce the armor of all enemies. And then maxed out, it's also going to have thorns, which is going to do 2 damage when another melee type unit attacks this card. I also have found a clip of the living lava against magic, which can be tough. This guy actually played it out pretty well, and I'm going to go ahead and show that to you guys and kind of voice over it for you as well. So he put this card out, I'm pretty sure, just to absorb like the brunt force here. His opportunity is going to take out the back line, so is the sneak. <coughs> Taking minimal damage for magic. And then his living lava just outclasses the Mustang in melee. That's going to allow his back line to clean everything up. Really good battle by that guy. Husk the Wide is up next. This card is part of the new Chaos Legion set and a cheap option for a Void Tank on the Fire Splitter. Due to its high health pool and Void, this card can help provide defense against magic lineups. It is, however, kind of slow and has no armor, so it could fall off against melee lineups. <clears throat> I do have a clip of... A player using Tusk the Wide against a melee deck. So I'm going to go ahead and show that to you guys now. And kind of show you how Tusk the Wide is used here to overcome a melee deck. And they are using Grum Plate, Flame Blade, which is also a powerful fire tank. So it's nice to see that this player was still able to win. His low mana cost gives you opportunities like this, especially with this rule set, the melee mayhem, to put out more damage. Really nice, uh, nice lineup by this guy. Next up is the Forgotten One. This card is going to be powerful in the Noxious Fumes rule set due to mainly his immunity. He does have really decent shield and kind of a high health pool, kind of in the mid tier of the health pools. Uh, he also won't be affected by Giant Killer since he is under the 10 mana threshold. In the later levels, he's also going to gain Retaliate, which is going to increase his damage output. Well, the chance of a higher damage output when other cards attack him, other melee cards attack him. And he also gains Pierce, which is going to help him ignore armor. So if he does 6 damage here, he would take away some of the health as well, instead of the armor just absorbing everything. We're going to go ahead and jump into a clip of him in the Noxious Fumes rule set and see how he performs. The summoner here is going to be Tarsa, increasing his damage by 5. Making him pretty powerful because he does have two speed as well. So as you can see here, he's not taking any damage from the fumes. Can achieve this with cleanse as well, so immunity is not necessarily necessary, but it can be helpful as shown here. Finally, we are moving into legendary front lines, starting with Grum Fireblade, a very powerful card on the Fire Splinter. Grum has Bloodlust, which was only previously seen in Guild Brawls. This ability gives him plus one to all stats upon killing another card. He also has Void Armor, which makes him a formidable opponent against Magic. When he's leveled up, he'll also gain Void and Giant Killer. This is only going to increase his usefulness against Magic, and then Giant Killer is going to give him a huge damage bonus against any cards that are 10 mana or higher and i have a clip here showing you guys just how powerful this card is so here's a battle of a single grum against three other cards and you guys can just kind of see how how powerful he is gonna gain some extra stats he gets that extra armor there which is going to 
allow him to live here. Speed as well, so not going to get that miss in, giving him the win pretty much. But you can see how powerful Grom could grow based on that fight right there. Not really sure how to pronounce this one, but we're going to go with Caladoom. This card is a lot more expensive than all the other ones we've already mentioned. But it could be useful in some situations. Uh, Void makes it pretty strong against magic, and the magic damage that it provides could make it pretty strong against cards with abilities such as shield and some high armor cards that don't have void or void armor. So yeah, Kalatum could be pretty good against those. Unfortunately, I couldn't find any clips of this card in battle, and I don't own them myself, so I can't provide clips. But I believe, uh, due to his high cost, most players shouldn't worry about purchasing this one, as he's pretty situational. But in the later levels, he does get some pretty good abilities, such as Cripple, Immunity, and Thorns. <clears throat> so Cripple's going to make monsters lose 1 max health each time it is hit. And immunity is for Noxus Fumes, as shown with the Forgotten one. And then Thorns is going to do that extra damage output when a melee attacker attacks him. So, he could be viable for some people, but for the vast majority, I don't think he's going to be too playable. Due to his high cost, mainly. Last but not least is Magnar. And this card is also pretty expensive in comparison to the others. However, his taunt could prove to be useful in a lot of battles. His high damage and speed could make him dangerous in a lot of situations as well. I will say he does have some downsides, and those are that the card doesn't have any armor. And he's over that 10 mana threshold, so he's going to be prone to giant killers bonus damage which could could cause some problems i could see and as you can see in the later levels he gains enrage and trample and a little bit of return fire so this card could prove to be pretty powerful however for most players he's i think he's over the cost barrier for most players and he won't be too usable because of that i also couldn't find any clips of this one so that's going to cover it for this video, guys. Thank you all for watching. Let me know what splinters you'd like me to cover in the next video in the comments. And please like and subscribe if you enjoyed the content.